It is a court case that has gained national attention. Now the rape retrial for Corey Beatty is underway. The case against the former Vanderbilt football player began today. We begin our team coverage tonight with Chris Conti, who was in the courtroom all day. And Chris, even though this is a retrial, there were still some surprises. And Vicki, even after hearing a lot of this testimony once before, there were still moments today that were graphic and hard to listen to as those details about what happened to that female student inside a dorm room a few years ago were laid out before the jury. A word, of, a word of warning if you have small children around the television, now might be a good time to turn down the volume. Uh, we're going to bring the jury in, swear them in, and get started. The only ones in this courtroom who haven't heard this all before are the 14 jurors who you will likely never see. It's like a perfect storm. Assistant DA Tom Thurman stuck to his script from the first trial, holding nothing back in opening statements as he told the jury about those fateful early morning hours in June of 2013. That they're taking pictures of her vaginal area and laughing. After a night of drinking at Tin Roof, Brandon Vandenberg brought his then girlfriend back to Gillette Hall. She was blackout drunk, Thurman said, when they encountered Corey Beatty. Eventually, they were all inside a dorm room where she was unconscious and being assaulted and all of it was recorded on an iPhone. He then attempts to have sex with her vaginally, but he can't get an erection. And you won't find semen from Mr. Beatty in me. Beatty's newest attorney, Courtney Teasley, quickly fired back. What you will not see ever is Mr. Beatty taking pictures. You won't see him taking videos. She argued that Beatty, who was 19 at the time, was also blackout drunk and merely being used as a puppet by his peers. The two drunkest people in the room become the entertainment for the night. But he violated the very principles of human decency. And while almost everyone in this courtroom has heard this all before, it's the 14 people who haven't who will ultimately decide the fate of Corey Beatty. The first day of this retrial wrapped up about 30 minutes ago with testimony from Detective Jason Mayo from the Metro Nashville De Police Department. He works in the sex crime unit and he was one of the first people to encounter the victim and tell her that they thought something was wrong. Worth noting here that the victim wasn't actually here in court today. She is studying for a final exam that she is taking on Thursday. We're told that she will likely testify sometime before the end of the week. We're live at the courthouse downtown this evening. Chris Conti, News Channel 5. Thanks, Chris. And while this trial continues, each day Nick Barris and political analyst Nick Leonardo give us gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage. Tonight, they have a lot to say about the start of this high-profile <laughs> retrial. All right, Nick Barris here along with Nick Leonardo. You know, we know as this trial progresses, we're going to see some of the very graphic video that's going to be very damaging to the defendant here, Corey Beatty. What did we learn today, in your opinion, the defense strategy, maybe from opening statements? Well, I think it's going to be analogous to the strategy they set forth last time. I think they're going to try to use this intoxication to somehow uh, get a lesser included defense to say that maybe Mr. Beatty had diminished capacity mm -hmm. and couldn't form the intent that is take to, to aid and abet in this particular crime. So I think they're going to see that. We're going to see more finger Pointing Finger pointing well. at Vandenberg, Brandon Vandenberg? All of them. I think, you know, none of them are there to defend themselves, so there's definitely going to be more finger pointing, and we're going to see some different evidence because there's different rules about people being tried together versus separately, just like what we saw today on the tape-recorded statement by Mr. Beatty uh, that was introduced from Mr. Black today. Yep, yeah, making the statement early on that, that Beatty was a puppet. For these right. others, there for entertainment. That might be the defensive stance strategy moving forward to help explain the video away. Real quickly, as we go to tomorrow, um, we have Detective uh, Mayo coming up for Metro. We expect that will take much of the morning. Sure, I think Detective Mayo, then maybe Detective Gish could occupy an entire day. Again, we don't have uh, two defendants here, so we don't have as many cross examinations and as many directs. But again, these w these witnesses on behalf of the state are, are rather lengthy. They've got a lot of electronic information that they have to set forth from videos and from cell phone takes footage time. as well, and it takes time. All right. Day two of the Vanderbilt rape trial beginning Tuesday morning. Thanks, guys. And make sure to keep it right here on the News Channel 5 network. We have gavel to gavel coverage on the trial each day on News Channel 5 Plus and streaming online. Plus, get a complete wrap up in every newscast here on the News Channel 5 main channel.